Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is The Questionable Garage. And today I get the chance to show you guys something legendary, the 2JZ engine. It was made ultra famous in the movie Fast and the Furious when it showed up in the non-turbo Supra, completely crashed, and it turned into that famous Paul Walker Supra bright orange that would decimate all at race wars. But as you can tell, this isn't a Supra. This is a 2002 Lexus IS300. Now, if you weren't aware, the 2JZ was available in the Toyota Supra. It was in the IS, the Lexus IS300. It was in the, the Lexus SC300 and the Lexus GS300. It is a formidable inline six, three liter engine that is known for making astronomical power. But in this platform, it doesn't. It's just been very mildly modified and it serves as a daily driver for my friend Randy's wife, Kelly. The original engine is at 300,000 miles. So what does the legendary 2JZ look like when it has that many miles? We're going to go through, we're doing valve stem seals, some basic maintenance on the car and getting it ready for another 300,000 miles. This thing is incredibly impressive. I'm excited to take you along for the adventure because I'll get to show you some of the tips and tricks of doing the valve stem seals and all the major service things that you'd need to do to keep an engine happy for all these many miles. Also, if you haven't seen her, Pierre is here to supervise and make sure we do a good job of everything. Uh, she's trying to find Bosco. Bosco goes for rides in this car and while he's not in it right now, Pierre can definitely pick up his smell. So. Uh, we got a lot to do and not a ton of time to do it. So uh, let's pop this hood and show you what's underneath. All right, so inside here, we have the three liter VVTI version, the variable valve timing with intelligence. And if you notice, we have this little hump and that has the intake camshaft able to adjust timing by using oil pressure. They do that for emissions, for power. It gives you you know, like 30 different versions of an intake camshaft. So you're able to do really good for making power. All 2J cranks are the same. The crankshaft, turbo, non-turbo VVTi, they're the same. Turbo and non-turbo, but not VVTi, a standard older version, connecting rods are the same. Once you go to the VVTi, they get a smaller connecting rod. They don't handle the big power just the same. But as we look in, you can tell it's pretty much a stock fully intact vehicle. Nothing too crazy going on. It gets used a lot and it's just been well cared for in maintenance. So it goes to show, maintain your cars. They're going to do well. Anyway, we got to get this engine apart. But before I do that, let me show you what we're going to be doing today. We have got ourselves a new water pump, timing belt, air filter, oil seals, timing belt tensioners and pulleys, spark plugs. We're doing an oil change. We're doing some valve stem seals. Now on the 1Js that's in like my twin turbo R or the 2J, they're notorious for the valve stem seals to go out. You start them up, you get a little bit of smoke on first startup. You just have to go through and do valve stem seals that gets them going. And then we're doing lower ball joints. I will show you that when it's in the air. Also some of the other just, you know, fluids, differential transmission, full service front to back. I really want to get inside this engine. I want to see just how good or, or bad 300,000 miles looks like. You look bored, Pira. Or are you just enjoying the cold floor? Oh. 
So if you guys are doing some type of crazy build, where would you sub a 2JZ in? Would you just do non-turbo? Would you do crazy built turbo? You start seeing them in just about everything. There's a guy with the Chevelle, goes to cars and coffee. It's fun watching people just trying to figure out what on earth they're looking at. Lots of people common it being an old Chevy V8 or inline six of some kind. Just because it's fun and a lot easier. If you go to tightreach.com, use Yeah, tightreach.com. TQG10, save 10%. Get, get yourself some. Now, this is just kind of tricky because of the pulley, but I've, I've liked these things a lot. I thought it was like something I'd use once or twice, and there's a lot of times they're useful to come out and do something with. had a really, really nice try to crank pulley tool. Para, stop. I'm trying to complain how people keep stealing my stuff. 238 foot-pounds, here we go. Oh, well that would be why that one was leaking oil. The seal pushed. I'm still just teasing. Like these valve covers can come off. We can see what it looks like, but. There we go. But yeah, don't be afraid to get in. Like we're doing time and belt. Like this is fairly major work, but it's so straightforward really on a, on a 2J that you can get into this and you can do this with basic can tools. There's a couple special things here and there, but it's nothing that it's so difficult to get a hold of that you can't do it. Well, I feel like we've kind of teased pulling these enough. All the bolts are out. The front end is fully stripped. Um, I found I need to order a couple new parts, even on top of all the hoses that have been exploding everywhere. But what does a 300,000 mile 2JZ look like? That, uh, it's driven, gets worked. Start with the ex... Actually, do we wanna go intake or exhaust? You're probably getting annoyed. Let's just pull one up, we'll go intake. Cause that has the crankcase ventilation. And, uh, holy cow. Wow. If you don't fully understand why I'm kind of holy cowing and wowing, this looks incredible for 300,000 miles. If I had to guess, it probably ran Castrol for a little bit because there's like no gelling. So what you can do to detect like oil sludge in your bolt holes, you know, like the, the bolts have a little divot, that's just dirty oil. There's not any gelling building build up anywhere in any of this stuff. But I'm thinking at some point it had Castrol. Castrol's really bad about dying engines, like kind of staining them. But, wow, okay. Exhaust side, this gets a lot of heat. A lot of heat and, wow, I mean, right along the same thing. Like it's, <laughs> what's funny is in the very back where you have the breather hose, it's super, super, super clean. And then you just get a little bit of coloring. There's a little bit of discoloration on a cam, but if all you did was send me this picture, a picture of this engine right here, and said, guess how many miles are on it? 300 would not be a number I'd even come close to suggesting. This engine 
is spotless. You would think even with regular changes, things like that, you would start seeing some buildup. But this thing has very, very clearly been well maintained. I do know they picked it up in the low 100,000 mile range and have put, I believe, the 200,000 miles on it themselves. And I mean, it's a take care of your cars, change the oil, do the maintenance. This, this is unbelievable. The 2JZ, it is the best engine for power, for daily driver use, everything. Our next steps inside here is we are gonna put in some fresh valve seals. So what that's going to involve is we're gonna remove the spark plugs and I'm gonna use compressed air to pressurize the chamber so we can remove the springs and keep the valves in place. It's a process we've done in the past and uh, we'll walk you through and show you that whole thing again where you take the Schrader valve out of your compression tester and hold that pressure in there, get everything apart and put it all back together. But sitting over here, you can see the cams and all the buckets nice and clean. I'll just a little bit of emery cloth, clean those up. I am going to use my bore brushes and just make sure the inside of the cams are nice and clean. But man, that's that's been a well cared for car. Did not expect, you know, basically perfection. Expected it to be a little bit dirtier. And uh yeah, she's not. gonna damage the valve with it and you're hearing that noise because we're actually mildly opening the valve you don't quite hear it obviously on the exhaust side because there's exhaust but that's seating we know everything is to go take it off barking spree that big old bark is a startling thing and I kind of jumped and sent my intake see the exhaust ones there's tons of room of course it's the side that doesn't have any room where did I put my tool you're not alone guys even experts have days because it fell. That's not where I put it. Give me a little bit of sympathy, car. Giving you nice things. And you're giving me a heartburn. New fancy seals that should last longer than Toyota seals. So we don't need to worry about you burning oil, reducing the octane of that fuel you get. So you can make all your horsepower live up to the legendary 2JZ status. Um, I mean, it's pretty stinking legendary just how good you're running still with your mileage. That's, you're your own legend. So if you're gonna do these on the car, there's the Toyo tool and then there's a little universal that you can cut down and make work. I own both buy the Toyo tool 
It, it is phenomenal for doing this. I believe it does the 3S GTEs and 3S GEs, a couple other engines as well in the Toyota family. Really is all the difference. One thing you also want to make sure you do when you're pulling up these seals, go around and check and see if there's any old rubber. These are hard. You can kind of tell how at the bottom it's missing a little bit. And that's just stuff that is separated, it's left behind. You just go around with a pick real quick and it'll walk it right off. That way your new seal has a good thing to bite down onto. Also, it's worth kind of running it around a little bit because there's going to be some oil trapped against the valve stem from where it was leaking. You can kind of gently scrape that if you want, spray some cleaner on it. I tend not to want to interfere too much in that area, just out of preference. What that does mean is when you first start it up, it will burn a little bit of oil for the first few miles as that trapped oil gets sucked in and consumed. And when you're doing it and you're able to say, okay, I know we're gonna get a little bit of oil burn. Here's why it will clear up. Sometimes that's your best option. It's just a gentle tap to seat. You'll hear it kind of get solid. That's how you know you're down at the bottom. Don't hit it, hit it anymore. I will say this is a lot nicer to do with stock valve springs. <laughs> Some of the aftermarket springs, now I have the kit that bolts down and it gives you a lever. That's also a really good option. It just it takes up a lot of space and you have to modify most off the shelf ones to work on a 2J. But sometimes air compressor it's okay bear. but yeah sometimes when you're doing the super heavy duty aftermarket springs you just you, you don't have the leverage to uh, be able to push down even for me with all my weight I can't do it so that's when you got to break out the arm setup. And... I'm actually kind of surprised how crunchy these Toyota seals are. And then... All right, we're getting ready to put everything back together. Now, when you're sliding your lifter buckets back in make sure they're going into the same hole they came out that's why we were so careful when we were setting everything up and just a small amount of grease you can use engine assembly lube um, a little bit of multi-purpose grease not a ton it needs to dissolve off and it's just to keep it from being dry since we've been spraying cleaners do not force these things like right there a little wiggle drops right down if you're forcing it most likely all that's happened is when everything's gone together, the spring is slightly offset of a retainer. So you just use a screwdriver and very gently move that back into position. Now, another thing you may be asking, why are we doing this again? Well, not everyone has seen the valve stem job video from a couple years ago. And two, I want to remind you guys, do not be afraid to get a wrench out get a little dirty yes this is a fairly major job but really the special tools required are the valve stem uh, removal tools and reinstallation tool which you can get at a very affordable pricing and then an air compressor and then a uh, compression tester that you take the Schrader valve out and you're able to have anything that's unique and special for uh, doing this job if you walk into the dealer, the amount of money you're gonna spend for this, let's just go down the list. Transmission service, I think right now is about $180, $190. A differential service is probably $150, if not a little more. 
front suspension arms, uh, the lower ball joints and labor, you're probably looking at three hours. You know, they'll, they'll probably charge you an hour and a half a side at 150. So there's $450. Hopefully Dwayne is keeping track of this because I'm not. Uh, <laughs> valve stem seals job. Most dealers are going to charge you probably 12 hours and that's not including a timing belt. That's just undressing the top end. So they're going to tack in another four to five hours for the water pump and timing belt job. So that's, let's say 17 hours. So that's math just shy of $3,000. And that's not including any parts. And the reason I'm not selling you parts, because if you're doing this job, you're going to buy the parts anyway. But do not be afraid to learn a skill. Working on cars, building models, uh, working on a computer, uh, riding a bicycle. If you've never done that, get a bicycle, learn how to do it. Life is about learning, learning new skills, being able to pass on and share knowledge and fill your storybook of life with experiences and yeah, I guess you can say adventures. Do stuff because the story about you going off on some crazy adventure with a friend, uh, the Southern classic, my friend Henry, flies out absolute last minute. No clue what the heck we're doing. We're desperately scrambling for a car because everything keeps breaking. And we had a great time and that's a story we can tell. Life is not about stuff. I'm not going to be one that says, oh, money will never buy you happiness. Money is a great tool. You know, unfortunately in the world, it takes money to do a lot of stuff. A really, really, really smart friend of mine told me as he was getting wealthy, he learned really quick. He never was going to let his money control him. And it was going to be his tool to be able to have experiences and to enjoy life. This is just now, now we're back to my opinion. The way I see it, when you're filling up the box of life, sure, cars and, you know, big fancy things take up a lot of space in that box of life, but they're empty. They're not, not very dense. There's not a lot to them. They're just big things. Stories and experiences are, you know, yeah, sure, they don't take up a lot of space. Maybe it didn't even cost you hardly any money to go on some hike with a friend where you got to see some amazing wildlife or just anything like that. Fill up your box of life really densely with stories and experiences. Quite frankly, I prefer talking to people about what they've done and not what they've bought. Because if all you do is use your money to chase happiness and buy things, it's never gonna be enough. But if you're out there having experiences, making friends and doing cool stuff, I think you're gonna be pretty richly fulfilled in life. I don't know, that's just me trying to impart some wisdom while I'm working along. I kind of went on a weird tangent. I was just trying to tell you, don't be afraid to work on your car. Now I'm telling you, secret to life is friends, family, and doing stuff, not buying stuff. And that's not to say you're not going to be happy. Again, I'm trying to work towards buying a brand new Supra. All right, so now we got our cam buckets in. I'm going to give it one more good rinse. And then we'll actually settle our camshafts in there, get them torqued down. And then once we do that, we do our backing plate. We'll actually do our bottom end up, water pump, backing plate. Torque the cam gears on. We'll have a 300,000 mile 2J ready for another 300,000 miles. I'm still also just baffled at how stinking clean everything is. <coughs> ah, spray back. Woo!
right. There is oil. Here, now you can see my head. <laughs> there's oil, there's coolant. I know we needed to top off coolant a little bit more. We needed the car running to get the heater core full. Let me tilt down. I'm trying to make the shot good for first startup. Means uh, I don't have a head for this talk part. But with the new radiator with the block drain completely, it's gonna take a couple seconds to get the coolant full. We don't have all the decorative covers on, but we do have all our brand new hoses. So hopefully it'll start. We're gonna uh, connect the power, find the key, and uh, I've done so many of these 2Js that should fire right up, I hope, you know. But you still get nervous every single time. It doesn't matter. Even if it's just a timing belt, valve stem steel job, it, it's nerve wracking. Probably even a little bit more nerve wracking is the fact it's a friend's car. So you really want it to work well. We've got a base four quarts of transmission oil. We'll probably have to add two or three. We know the oil is gonna be perfectly fine. We have got two gallons of coolant. It's gonna need a little bit more, but again, until everything's circulating, it won't take it. New air filter, new everything. So let us come around. Where did Jared put the key? I think it's over here. Yep. Let's hope uh, we fire up. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, we are all done. And again, some of you may be asking at this point, why? Why did I just jump in with a Lexus? We did some real, you know, fairly... <sighs> I have no clue where these hiccups came from. All right, now a question some of you may be asking as we are all finished with the work here on this Lexus is why? Why did we suddenly just bring in a random car do a bunch of maintenance work for a friend and get it out the door. There's two reasons. Reason one, I want you guys to realize a lot of this major work isn't that difficult. I'm not gonna say it is easy. You need to know what you're doing. There's information available to you, but you can do it. Something a dealership is gonna charge you over $3,000 in labor alone Give or take, Dwayne did the math earlier, I didn't. But we did a lot of big repairs and just general service to a 300,000 mile car and it didn't cost us a whole lot. You can buy all of these parts for a relatively good price, something you'll find, like with the water pump, it'll be an Ison branded pump and the Toyota will be ground off of it. It's the exact same thing you get from Toyota. So with some careful shopping, you're getting dealership level parts for not a lot of money and you can save so, so much. So a basic tool kit, we did that tool series a while ago for a thousand dollars. That was predominantly what I used. We had about $150 in special service tools for this job and we saved thousands, thousands. So don't ever be afraid to try some of this stuff yourself. I want you guys to feel empowered. I want you guys to see us do the work and go, hey, I can do that. The industry desperately needs mechanics. There's a lot of people who don't want to get their hands dirty, who don't want to put in the work anymore, which makes the people who want to a whole lot more valuable. The, the rate that a mechanic is able to get at a dealership now is substantially more than when I did it as a full-time career. You're able to make a really, really good living as a good mechanic. So don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. The other reason why we went ahead and brought on this Lexus for a one episode series is there has been a lot of comments, I've gotten a lot of emails as far as what I would recommend as a good daily driver that's kind of fun. This is what you would call a first generation IS, a one IS. I have in my ISF a two ISF and let's go outside to me uh, a day ago with a three IS. When I say I think the IS really is one of the very best daily drivers that you can get if you want a slight enthusiast oriented with lots of aftermarket support, the wife 
She daily drives a 3IS, an F-Sport Turbo. They're amazing cars. You can get lots of miles out of them. I have a high mileage ISF, a V8, the 2IS. We've got a 300,000 mile one inside. So, you know, pr proof is in what we drive. We There's three generations, we drive them all and they're all great. They are phenomenal value for money. The Lexus IS series are incredibly fun. They're incredibly capable and, well, a lot of them came with a 2JZ and we know how phenomenal the 2JZ is. So any of the 2IS, 3IS, 1IS series, any of the IS family cars, you can't go wrong. Hopefully you're inspired a little bit by this. If not, well, I'll try again a little bit in the next episode to inspire you to get your hands dirty because that, that's what I'm here to do. I'm Jared reminding you guys to always make questionable choices, and I'm gonna repeat what I've already said. Get out there and make memories. Time is finite, you don't have a lot of time to do it. So, make a memory, do something fun. We'll see you next time.